War Room Nation, what's really good? This is Jimmy at JW The Blueprint of War Room Sports. And welcome to A Few Good Minutes in the War Room. Like I said, we're putting out content all month. This is about the 12th video. I don't even know how many days because we're just grinding right now. And I got my brothers with me to join along in this video so we can, you know, do what we do and talk our ish. Dev, what's going on? Obamatomically, Socrates, philosophies, and hypotheses. Can't define how I be dropping these mockeries. Lyrically perform. Yo, B. Austin, what's good, homie? Hold on, Rob Roberts. We with yeah. the lottery. Yeah. Um, yo, I'm I trying to get. I'm done. I'm trying to get with uh Blake Griffin. I mean, what's up? We put some bread up. Whoa, whoa. We talk about Blake in a little bit though. Before we start this uh, uh video, I just yeah. want to say rest in peace to cousin Harold. But yo, um, in this video, in this few good minutes, we're gonna talk about Monte Ellis because you know right, a story right. broke. A story broke about Monte. You know, opting out of his contract and making all kinds of crazy business decisions. So, um, <clears> Deb, I know you got the the, the numbers and everything. Let us yeah. know what's going on with Monte, yo. Um, as we know, Monte opted out of the final year of his $66 million deal with the Milwaukee Bucks, so that would have paid him $11 million in that final year. Then the Bucks tried to extend him. Um, they tried to give him $36 million over the next three years, and he turned that down because he said he's looking to, to have an extra year, four years, around $40 million. So because the teams aren't lined up to, to for his demands, he fired his agent, uh, Jeff Free, and he's expected to sign with, uh, I think, Dan Fagan. Oh, not Rock Nation? Not Yo, Rock real Nation? Quick, no, real quick, though. Um, <laughs> so the, basically the market isn't what he thought it was, so he's firing his agent because the market isn't what he thought it was. I mean, it could be a situation where his agent gave him the info. Yes. Shout, out to, shout out to Geno Smith. His agent could have gave him his info, like, yo, it's a huge market out there. Right. Now, Monte's a great scorer. In terms of what else he brings to the game, I don't know because I've never really seen him play defense in his entire career. Um, he's an amazing player on 2K, but this isn't 2K. So, um, gentlemen, let's just go real quick, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. Brother B. Austin, what's your thoughts on this whole Monte situation? Um, I think that he's an idiot. and Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, he doesn't – I mean, he doesn't do enough to warrant the type of numbers that he's talking about, first of all. He does. He brings absolutely no value outside of scoring, and to get his, you know, to get his 19 points, he's going to take 20 shots. So, like 20 shots to get 19 points doesn't warrant you being a 10 million, 11 million dollar dollar player per year. He needs to be someone's sixth man, in my opinion, because it's been seven years in eight years in the league, seven years in the league, and there's been no actual marked improvement. In his game, he hasn't really added anything other than maybe a little bit of range to his jump shot. Um, I mean, he's, still a, he's still a higher, he's a higher gun, so he has value. In he's a gun. He can, oh yeah, yeah, he has value. He just not he will give you, know, you, he will give you twenty death. I was about to say, Monte actually makes like when I watch him play, he makes shots that I just don't think he can make. Uh, I mean, when I watch him and he gets cooking, he he's a thing to watch. But like you said, he doesn't really bring anything outside of you know the scoring part, and he did average. 19.2 and, and six assists for Milwaukee last season. The six assists yeah. is kind of surprising. Um, my <laughs> thing in this whole deal, like, Jimmy, what you brought up earlier, I kind of, when I first heard it, I thought, okay, Monte is tripping. You know what I'm saying? He's going to fire his agent and make him the scapegoat. But it, it is true that the agent may have been the one to give him the advice. Yo, you should opt out. You shouldn't accept that deal because I can mm -hmm. get you more. You know, so I'm not just going to go out on a limb and call him an idiot because he may have been listening yeah. to his agent like we always try to tell these players to do. So you know, <laughs> I'll reserve that type of judgment until we get, you know, yeah. and, details, here, and, agents, and agents are only going to get paid off of new money. So, you know, yeah, you so it makes sense for the to get a new contract. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, be, but let me ask you guys a question before we get out. Let me ask you guys the last final question about this because uh, – I think it was time for them to leave Milwaukee anyway because uh, the backcourt, we call it a Call of Duty backcourt because they both guns <laughs> back there. I don't think that was going to work. Um, but the question is, in terms of the money he was already making, do you think that was fair market? Do you think $11 million is like uh, accurate for a player that brings his uh, abilities? Do you think he was already getting overpaid? Um, I, I definitely think he was probably getting a little overpaid. But a little. In, in, on, on the NBA landscape, like there's really nobody who we – who we've ever agreed on was getting the type of money that they're worth unless you're somebody who's just filling up the seats, you know, selling the merchandise and stuff like that. So, you know, for me, I'm just close with, you know, Monte, I think his skill sets are actually, they actually lend themselves to him being a premier six man in the league. 
I don't know if that'll ever yeah, fly. So we, all, we all sense to the same thing. Yeah, especially with these type of demands yeah. that he's making. I don't know if that'll ever fly, but that's yeah, where we I all see my We also had the same thoughts. I'm, I'm gonna give you, in terms I'm of give finances, you, what do you think? Just make it brief. What do you think about finances? I'm going to give you three names. J.R. Smith, Jamal Crawford, and Jason Terry. Look at what they make, and that's what Monte Ellis should be making. Okay. Well, J.R. Smith has got him a nice piece of change. Six man of the year, granted. All right. Final question. Just give me one team. Take the money out of it. Where do you think Monte would fit uh, skill-wise? Uh, B. Austin, let's stay with you. Where do you think mm. you fit skill-wise? Miami. <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. <laughs> Dev, skill-wise, where do you think he should go? Dallas. <laughs> Shout out to KC Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out there, let us know what you think about Monte Ellis. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to say did he make a mistake in opting out because actually right now it looks like he's making a mistake. Um, but where do you think he should land? Uh, where, what, do, what team do you think should make a run for Monte Ellis? And what do you think about his game? Do you think he's a one-dimensional player like a lot of people think? Do you think he was already getting overpaid? Let us know what you think. Again, you know, this is War Room Sports. We bring content to you on a daily basis, and we want to hear from you. Check out our website, warroomsports.com. Check out our podcast because it's the best podcast known to man. And like we always say in the war room, don't accept mediocrity and be steadfast in the war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on top. Throw your W's up. <laughs> the wait is the war room.